a big beat, uh, and the market likes it. We're, we've been trying to talk about earnings these days in the context of what's actually happening in the real economy. You are the real economy. What are you seeing here? Good morning, Andrew. And um, what we're seeing is really the resilience of local businesses. I mean, as you saw in our numbers, we had you know record growth in terms of the volume that we delivered. We also beat on the bottom line as well. And, you know, the resilience of demand for delivery continues to be really strong, as reflected in our guidance as well. And so, you know, in addition to achieving all of these positive things for the platform, we're very proud that we're able to generate tens of billions of dollars for merchants, ten, pay out tens of billions of dollars in earnings to dashers, and continue to reduce fees for consumers. Tony, in terms of thinking about your business, if you believe it is at all a barometer for just the health of the consumer, what did you see in the last quarter? And maybe more importantly, what do you expect in the next? Well, what we saw in the last quarter was continued, I mean, strength. I mean, in each of the last five quarters now, we've grown gross order value north of 25 percent and revenues north of 30 percent. And so I think this is a phenomenon that you've seen throughout, you know, the kind of um, decline of the pandemic. At the same instance, obviously, there's a lot of macro headwinds, and it's very hard to quantify those things. But food has shown to be the most resilient category, as it has shown in each of the last six decades. And, you know, that's our forecast on a go forward basis, too. Even as the market leader today, we're still less than 10% of US restaurant industry sales. Globally, that's a much smaller number. So we believe the runway and the potential is very big. You know, we have a lot of people who seem to be very, very nervous, uh, perhaps rightly, uh, that a recession is looming. We are in it or something something else. What are you seeing in that regard? Do you think that there's been a change in, from a, in a trend perspective that sort of generationally people are just willing to to have deliveries and pay for them? Um, and, and what do you expect as you as you look out at 23 at this point? Well, I think certainly there's some impact. I mean, I think logically speaking, when you have a war, when you have an energy crisis, when you have sticky inflation, it's very hard to not think that there's no impact on the consumer. You know, in terms of what we've seen at DoorDash, while order rates on an aggregate basis, you know, um, are relatively the same from those who are ordering today versus those who joined us during the pandemic, it certainly is stronger for our Dash Pass subscribers. That's our membership program, which saw all time highs in the third quarter as well. You're seeing a lot of the impact on those customers instead, on those who haven't been as habituated into the service. But, you know, net net, generally, you're still seeing that resilience. In terms of margin, how much discounting is still going on? Well, we've actually never been a platform that believed in discounting. I mean, if you looked at, you know, the percentage of discounts, it stayed relatively, you know, small. Most of DoorDash's growth has been organic. If you, if you looked at our PL, the sales and marketing you know, um, leverage is really what has allowed us to, you know, continue to increase our free cash flow as well as, you know, um, achieve 10 straight quarters of positive EBITDA.